workers are fed up. They're frustrated. They're, you know, they, they watch these uh, mega corporations making record profits, uh, and, and we sit back and everybody wants to, you know, repress the workers' wages. After two years of trying to get a new contract in place, more than 155,000 Canadian federal workers are on strike across the country in what is the biggest labor action in Canada in over 30 years. So, in this video, I will go over the details of what is going on here, how this may impact you. Also, uh, a couple of clips from CBC News and their framing of this discussion and their uh, interview with the president of the union, as well as some clips from major party leaders, except for one who, as of recording this, is interestingly absent on this discussion despite all of his rhetoric about workers. So we'll get to who that is later on in this video. But first here, this is the announcement that um, the Public Service Alliance of Canada, the representative of the workers, made on uh, Twitter here saying, on strike, Treasury Board and CRA members are on strike, effective tomorrow or now today. Please make plans to attend your closest picket line as early as you can. And I will link to all this below the video, but you can see workerscantwait.ca. So... On their site, they write, with nearly a third of the entire federal public service workers on strike, Canadians can expect to see slowdowns or a complete shutdown of services nationwide beginning tomorrow or today, including a complete halt of the tax season, disruptions to employment insurance, immigration and passport applications, interruptions to, support, to supply chains and international trade at ports, and slowdowns at the border with administrative staff on strike. In terms of what they're asking for, Nothing crazy here, just your standard uh, negotiation. So after months of soaring inflation, government workers are pushing for higher wages, along with protections around remote work, more inclusive anti-racism and harassment training, and ending the contracting out of services. Now, they are continuing these negotiations. They do appear to be getting closer, at least on the discussion around wages. So, uh, of course, we'll see how this all plays out. But here is a uh, example. Um, let me go down here for a second, maybe, just to show you. Uh, this is one of the locations in Ottawa, of course, out in front of uh, Parliament Hill here. There are several locations where there are workers out uh, picketing in Ottawa. But um, here's probably one of the bigger ones. There they are out there. So let me get to... Um, more here. So, uh, Aylward, Chris Aylward, the uh, president of uh, the union, says uh, said last Wednesday most members make between forty thousand and sixty five thousand a year, and are struggling with the high cost of living. Also, the union's last public wage proposal was four point five percent for twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two, and twenty twenty three. The Treasury Board last shared an offer to increase wages by nine percent over three years, a total that mirrors the recommendations of the third party public interest commission. Yet that doesn't, I don't think that takes in a, into account the impact of inflation that that um, has already had the impact on wages before this. But that said, from what I have seen, they are getting closer on the wage front. So, uh, you know, at some point, I assume they will meet at a place that makes sense for both of them. But I want to show you how this is being framed on CBC News that we're told is very liberal, whatever that means. <laughs> Does that mean they're very pro-Trudeau or... Are they very far left wing? Because if they were actually far left wing, then they would be very pro worker in their discussions here. But look at the framing of the questions. Uh, at least it's this question around um, this strike. You know, given some of the challenges we've had with government services over the last couple of years, are you prepared for a bit of a backlash from the public if there were further slowdowns? I know passports was a massive issue uh, coming out. Uh, you know, of the real depths of the lockdown, are you prepared for that kind of pushback if a, if a strike leads to a slowdown there? Well, look, let's just talk about that for a second. Yeah. Uh, the last summer with the uh, the passport program, because uh, people quickly forget what happened in 2013. In 2013, that's when the 10-year mm -hmm. passport was introduced. Uh, the government of, uh, of the day uh, laid off thousands of Passport Canada uh, employees. Uh, that basically did away with Passport Canada. Passport Canada doesn't even exist today. They come under Service Canada now. So you introduce a 10-year passport program in 2013. You've got to figure, nine years from now, there's going to be a scramble of people requesting passports again. And that's what happened uh, last summer. All right, so i got a second clip coming up here from this interview. But look at the framing of this question. Are you, the workers, prepared for a bit of a backlash because of 
a disruption in government services as they've already been seeing. How how is that this on them when in the case that was brought up with passports, the government laid off people that worked in the passport office. They changed those services to make them worse by laying people off. Why isn't the onus, why isn't the backlash towards the government that laid them off or the people in charge that aren't putting towards or aren't putting forward a fair deal for these workers? This is how these strikes are always framed. It's on the workers. Oh, workers on strike. This is how your your uh, services will be disrupted or this is how it'll, it'll impact you. Instead of management can't put a fair deal for, forward, here's how this may impact you. Or at least make it neutral. Contract dispute. Here's how it'll impact you. But instead it's always, oh, workers on strike. Damn them. This is how it's going to impact you for, for them going on strike. When <laughs> this is... And so it ends up pitting workers against workers because most people are workers. So they see in the media, oh, these workers are on strike. How dare they? They should fall in line. But you yourself are a worker. Shouldn't you have some say over your over your life, over your pay, over your benefits? Like this, I don't even think it's intentional because this is just how reporting has been done forever. But at some point you have to question, why are we framing it like this? Maybe there's a better way to do this and put a little more onus on management for not putting forward a fair deal. But let me get to uh, the second clip here from uh, this interview that I want to show you. But still, people were angry about it. And, and you know, and, and some people may still not have what they want. And if a strike, if job action, you know, further impairs their ability to do that, they're going to be angry again. Right. So this is the reality you're facing if you do, do take the strike. Canadians are angry today anyway because of the current economic uh, context. Uh, workers right across this country, whether they're unionized, non-unionized, public sector, private sector, workers are fed up. They're frustrated. They're, you know, they, they watch these uh, mega corporations making record profits, uh, and, and we sit back and everybody wants to you know, repress the workers' wages. And, and that's the, the, the issue that we're really having with the government. This government is on record as saying they believe in workers. Mm -hmm. Well, being the largest employer in the country then don't try to repress your wages on your own employees because when they repress wages on their own employees, they're repressing wages for all workers in all sectors. So we want them, we want them to come to the table and set that bar so that all workers uh, can get a fair and decent uh, wage increase because well, that's what workers in this country deserve in the current economic context. I love here how Aylward turns this question around about anger, the, the anger that Canadians have, and makes it about the workers against their bosses makes it about workers versus corporations. This is how you deal with a question like this because of, I mean, or you could just be like, this is a ridiculous way to frame this <laughs> entire discussion. When it comes to, again, just a, a second point on the backlash thing. When it comes to backlash that people may, may have towards somebody, how do they know where to direct their backlash? Media. Media are the ones that frame these issues. So if there is backlash towards the workers for going on strike, that's because the media told them you should be angry at these workers for going on strike. And maybe not in those words exactly, but the way they frame these discussions, their feeling is towards, oh, how damn these workers go on strike. That's on the media. Any backlash is on the media for telling them how to feel. Now, let's get to uh, Justin Trudeau first. Uh, his response to this, which is just a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> But here's the Prime Minister and uh, his reaction. Force public servants to go back into the office to work to you. Uh, what we are saying, what I'm saying right now is public servants, unions, need to get back to the negotiating the table office. right why, now. Why is it important to your government to force public servants to go into the office to do the remote work they've been doing for three years? Well, we are not, we are not negotiating in public right now. The negotiations happen at the uh, negotiating table, but the reality is Canadians have every right and expectation to see the services uh, that they expect delivered. Uh, we understand it's really important to respect labor rights and there's a labor disruption right now. It's the first day. Uh, let's make sure that while this is going on, we are at the negotiating table. That's where we expect both managers and uh, unions to sit down and keep the hard work for Canadians. All right, so I'll get to the other two major party leaders in a second here, but he says here, Canadians have every right and for a split second, I, I thought maybe he would be saying Canadians have every right to go on strike when they feel they're not getting a fair deal. But of course, he's not going to say that because he's representing his government. So Canadians have every right to get the services they expect. <laughs> okay. 
I mean, and then it, to be fair, he does go on to kind of say um, uh, something about, I don't know, rights and these workers. So he sort of alludes to the right to strike, though not really saying that. But I'm being too charitable here. Uh, obviously, he's going to be on the other side of this issue, not on the side of the workers. You have Jagmeet Singh, though. This is the uh, NDP leader. And here is uh, his reaction during an interview on CPAC. The government has an opportunity now to settle this by negotiating a fair contract that recognizes that these public sector workers are the ones that deliver the much needed help that Canadians would not have been able to get through the pandemic without. So this is really important. Now, have you specifically had one-on-one -on -one discussions with the Prime Minister regarding the, the Peace Act negotiations? I did raise uh, with, with the Prime Minister in, in our regular meetings, I did raise the concerns that were brewing at the time, this is some, some months ago, that uh, public sector workers are going to be negotiating contracts. I expect the government to do uh, a fair job of negotiating fair contracts for these workers who have done so much for Canadians. I mentioned the pandemic, the supports that went out to people, that was a record level of support that went out to a record number of people, and that's a public service that did that. So they deserve to have fairness and to be treated with dignity and respect. Given the cost of living and inflation pressures, they need to see fair wages. All right. So typical NDP response, of course, they're going to come out on the side of the workers here. Though nothing too, I don't know, out of the ordinary standard standard response. Nothing really wrong with it. Just doesn't really stand out to me. But uh, what I find interesting, though totally predictable, <laughs> is the response or lack thereof from the conservative leader Pierre Polyev, who has been talking a big game about how much he's so pro worker. Oh, on the side of workers, how damn damn these corporations. Pierre Polyev, I I, I googled. Looked on his Twitter. I, I tried to find a response from him. So far, there's nothing. As of recording this, there's nothing. I'm sure at some point he has to acknowledge this. He'll be asked about it. I'm sure he'll, it'll, it'll be something about uh, an attack on Trudeau and try to avoid the worker discussion is, is my guess is how he'll try to address this. But um, so far, there's just uh, there's 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 nothing here. There's nothing here. Um so it's about Trudeau and his Jamaican vacation. Okay. I mean, sure, criticize that. Maybe also bring up this massive strike going on, <laughs> the largest in decades. I don't know. But he, here is why, of course, he is not going to say much about it, if anything. But he will at some point address it, as, as I said. But this is from, um, I'm not sure how many years ago this was. But here is uh, the last time I saw the PSAC uh respond or have any interaction here with Pierre Polyev. And that was in response to Pierre Polyev's statements on union dues, where uh, he wanted to introduce legislation that would allow members to withdraw from, from paying dues to their union, essentially bankrupting unions, bankrupting the only groups that have workers' interests in mind. Pierre Polyev talks a big game about workers' rights, but of course does not want workers to have any actual rights or power. He is prolific in his votes against workers. So another uh, example here, and this is a long article. I'm only going to quote one piece, but there is a lot here. Uh, Pierre Polyev claims he's a friend of the working class. He spent years attacking Canadian workers. So this is just one example I have. Under Stephen Harper's government, Polyev was one of the loudest supporters of the anti-union bill C-377, a likely unconstitutional piece of legislation that tried to force Canadian labor unions to disclose all of their internal finances, while big corporations would not have been subject to the same rules. Polyev is also a major proponent of bringing U.S. right-to-work laws to Canada. Right-to-work laws weaken the labor movement by making it more difficult for unions to collect membership dues, which pay for the collective bargaining process. Wages and benefits are lower on average in states with right-to-work laws, as I've discussed before in previous videos. So uh, there's more, by the way, there's more here. There's a lot more here. I could spend all day reading this article <laughs> of all this anti-worker positions, but I will link to this below the video. Just this, the, if if you, maybe, maybe you don't follow politics too closely, but you've got this impression that Pierre Polyev is on the side of you. He's on the side of the working class. He is not. He is Full of crap, completely. Look at his actual positions, actual votes, what he's actually done with his power since uh, being uh, in Parliament. Last thing here, uh, in case you're curious about specific impacts on labor disruptions, I will link to this below. You can go through uh, various institutions and see how they may be impacted by uh, the strike. So good resource there. But uh, there you go. 
Let's hope the workers get a fair deal.